Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com and today I'm going to show you how to do some printing from Lightroom on Windows 7. Um, these techniques hopefully should work on Windows 8 as well and this is Lightroom 4.3 at this point in time. It should work with future versions and definitely works fine with past versions as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by going to the print module and for our uh, image, we can come over here, pick the size that we want, and then generally a good place to start when you're doing printing is over here with page setup. Because what we want to do is we make sure we want to set the printer first, and then set our paper size, and then where uh, we're printing from. And so we're going to start with the um, R3000 for this tutorial. We're going to do portrait and we're going to set 8 by 8.5 by 11. So once I have that set up, then that will impact my margins because based on the type of printing that I chose, it'll have uh, minimum margins. So you'll notice that 0 is my minimum margin here. So over here, after we've chosen our page setup, um, we can do zoom to fill, which will give us a true full borderless. Um, but that's going to distort the image. It's going to look fine, by most people's opinion. If you're a real stickler, you might look a little bit um, distorted to you. But honestly, I think it looks great. This is what we're accustomed to for most of our prints. Um, but if you want to maintain your aspect ratio of your image, then you'll clear this, which on a paper that's not the correct aspect ratio, it will leave uh, these letterbox borders. Um, and then if Lightroom has additional options that I won't get into because that's really Lightroom features and I'm focused on printing right now. Um, our margins, uh, we can change our margins, but generally we would like these set to the minimum. Um, and that also helps us um, get our uh, image exactly where we want it on our page, um, which is in the center. And then down here on the bottom, we want to print to printer. Our print resolution should match our printer, which for Epson is 360. And then if our image has never received any sharpening or only mild creative sharpening, then we can turn on print sharpening. And we use for, um, when we're using photo black ink on um, uh, papers that have any kind of uh, gloss to them, then we'll choose glossy. And otherwise we'll choose matte. And then how much sharpening you choose is a personal preference. Again, if there's not much sharpening, then high is probably fine. Um, put it on none or low if you've done some extensive creative sharpening like I've done here. For color management, this is where we go from manage by printer, which lets the printer driver do all the work, to letting Lightroom do the work and specifying a correct paper profile, which is what we choose to, what I choose to do. So when you click profile, um, you need to select your paper profile. And so what I do, I open up on the wrong screen there. Um, is we'll scroll through, this, scroll through this list, and I have a bunch of them in here. Um, but essentially what you want to do is you want to have these checked off for use for later. Like for example, for my 4900, I have Premium Luster, and then I have uh, Luster Photo Paper 260. That is um, for when I'm using a roll paper, and this is when I'm using sheet paper. So I can have both of those available if I wanted. And then if I keep scrolling through my list here, um, Let's see, actually go up here the, for the 3880. I have Premium Luster Photo Paper, and it doesn't print rolls, so it's just one choice. And then for my R3000, we get down here to the SP R3000 Premium Luster, and we'll click OK. And then we have. Um, our paper profiles now available to us in here. We want to make sure we choose R3000. And then for our rendering intent, I generally do render uh, relative unless I see some reason why that didn't work out well. And generally if the image isn't quite as um, vibrant as I'd like. Relative is usually very accurate, works very well. Uh, sometimes we need perceptual. Uh, like Canon printers, I tend to do perceptual more than I do on Epson printers. Um, but again, that's personal preference based on what you like. If you want, you can print both and decide which is best for your image. And then print adjustments is if you decide, you know, 
I have this image optimized for my display, but I really want it to print a little bit brighter when I actually print it. You can come in here and amp up the brightness um, or change the contrast or do whatever you want to do. Now you can click this print one, but that's really bad news. <laughs> you really should be looking at the driver and what it does before you print. So I always choose print and then come on here and say properties. And this is where I set my printer driver settings. <clears throat> you can create um, favorites on here so that you can get to them quickly, but I usually just set these uh, manually. And then for media type, um, ultra premium, you'll find that I believe under photo paper down at the bottom here. And then for color, maximum quality, or you can come under quality options and set it to five. And then high speed says print both directions when the print head's going back and forth. Turn that off and it'll go, it'll take twice as long. Um, but the bi-directional printing is worthwhile for what we're doing here because this ink dries quickly and so it's not a problem. It's only if you have a problem with your ink smearing a little bit should you turn off bi-directional. <clears throat> now, I always want to make sure that there's no color adjustments because I'm letting Photoshop do that work. So if you do, do it twice, it's going to create bad results. I want to choose my correct uh, paper tray, which I'll choose the sheet tray. Um, I can also um, use roll paper in this printer, so I can choose that as well. And then for my size, this value will change depending on whether or not I've clicked this box. If I've clicked this, have not clicked this box, then it'll just show one value. If I click reduce and enlarge, it says fit it to the page, and I get a paper size and an output size. So that's what this will reflect. And you can do that on the other page. For expansion, it says when you do borderless, how do you want it to expand? And you can say auto expand to the minimum amount or bleed it out as far as necessary in order to make sure we cover all the edges. And that's generally what we like. Again, it'll do a little bit of distortion. If you don't want any distortion, you're better off not doing borderless and printing exactly um, what you have that's been pre-scaled uh, somewhere else. From Lightroom, you're generally not going to have it scaled properly unless you exported it, re-imported it back in. So um, expansion is common. Um, and generally people are happy with the results. So don't get too ca uh, caught up on those uh, details unless you're really a stickler for every single pixel. Paper config, don't fool with it. This is um, basically what you're configuring when you're setting the media type along with some other things. You don't need to change that value. So once we're all good to go, we can kind of review here. I like to take screenshots of these and save them in my printer's log um, just to make sure I know how I got my print result that I did and I number all my prints. Um, so we can click OK. And then if I click OK here, it's going to print. Now, I'm going to talk about a couple other printers for people who are not using R3000. If you just use an R3000, you can stop this video now. If you're using one of the others, then stay tuned for just a short uh, introduction to your printer profile and driver. So I'm going to say 3880, and I'm going to say OK. And you'll notice the image shrunk. Well, why did it shrink? Let's go back. Because we didn't have borderless on here, and so it set the margins. So if I go to borderless now, click OK, I can roll, roll these back to the zero margins to get that borderless uh, effect if I want. And I have to set the paper size to its full size in order to get exactly what I want. Now, everything stays the same, except I need to choose the right printer profile for my printer. Once I've done that, come in, choose my properties again. Again, we always, always, always want to bring up our printer driver. And in fact, in this case, things are set very wrong. We do want um, the luster paper, which is on photo paper. We want color for our speed. We want quality five. Four and five both work very well. Um, most people won't be able to see the difference between four and five. You save a little bit of ink with four. 
but if you want the best results, choose five, use a little bit more ink. High speed works the same way. I come in here, there you notice there's not an option to turn it off. The reason why is because that's under custom. So choose custom, say no color, uh, color adjustment. For our source, again we can do sheet or we can do one of the manual uh, feeds. So this is for, uh, for the front when you have really thick papers and rear when you're having thin papers. Um, I generally do manual rear, it's my favorite. Um, and then for our paper size, same as before, you can come here to letter and I can choose borderless. It's brought up a little message box telling me about uh, the edges being smeared. I never had the edges smeared, but it's true, it's possible. Say auto expand maximum and then page layout if we want to make sure it fits within the page we do reduce and large and you'll see that it scales it to 103 percent that's ensure that it fills the whole page say okay bam we're ready to print that one one last one so if you're using a 3880 you can stop the video now and if you're using a 4900 you can continue to watch this last segment. <clears throat> so now let's choose our 4900. Again, roll paper, roll paper or not. And roll paper, we have um, borderless versions. And so I'm going to say um, my manual feed. Now these say borderless, but I've had a lot of problems with um, the 4900 actually doing borderless. So um, I just generally choose my manual feed. So I'm going to come in here to properties. And then you'll notice this is set for the roll paper of luster. If you have that, great. And that may be your default. What it comes to may be totally different. That's just what it had to come off of mine. So that's for the roll paper. This is a little bit thicker. And then this is for the sheet paper. Choose the correct paper. Always choose your correct paper whenever possible. For quality, we can just say max quality. That will give us the results we were talking about previously. No color adjustment. Borderless. If we choose to do that, I'm going to say no. And then um, we're going to say 11 and a half. Printable area. If you want your image to be centered, you have to choose maximum and centered. Otherwise it will not be centered to your page. Page layout. I generally do reduce and large. You'll see it'll shrink a little bit here in this particular printer's case. And fit to page. Okay, if I choose OK. Then now all my margins are set. My um, preview is all ready to go. Only thing I need to do now is come in here, set my correct profile to the premium luster photo paper for the 4900. Print, bada bing.